Testament, Ezekiel, chapter number 18, verse number 20. Amen. Today, Ezekiel, chapter number 18, verse number 20, reads, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Can you just repeat after me? The soul that sinneth, the soul that sinneth it, shall die. it shall die. And that's what our title is for today. The Bible makes it very clear right here in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 18 and verse number 20. It help us to know that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Wow. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can go against the word of God. Yeah. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Yeah. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Mm -hmm. So just because the father sinned doesn't mean, amen, that fall upon me. Just because they made the son sin doesn't mean it falls upon the father. Amen. But the Bible says, the soul that sinneth, yes, yes. it shall what? Die. 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 Means that each and every one of us, each and every one of us, will take an account to the sins or <laughs> deeds that are done in our body. Uh, so it can't be put off on somebody else. It can't be put off on a preacher because the preacher have already shared, oh, amen, yeah. the right word of God. Oh, yeah. Amen. So if I sin, even though I've heard the word, that blood falls upon, amen, me, the one who sins. Amen. As long as we're doing what God says and what we're doing, we're sharing God's, God's word. We've heard that the proverb over the saying in, in uh, verse number one of the same chapter, take a this, the word of the Lord came unto me again saying, this is Ezekiel, what mean ye that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on the edge. Ah. God said is that, hey, doc, you're not going to use this proverb anymore. Mm -hmm. Because the soul that said it, it shall die. Mm -hmm. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 31, I'm just going to go to the old and I'm going to go to the new, okay? I'm going to share some things here regarding this. Jeremiah, chapter number 31, verses number 29, uh, and I'm going to read 29 through 33. Take a listen to this. Jeremiah, chapter number 31, and we'll start at verse number 29. It says this, In those days they shall say no more, the fathers have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But every one shall die for his own iniquity. Mm -hmm. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever eaten any sour grapes? Mm -hmm. Teeth seem like it's set on edge. <laughs> And so the thing is, is that is that one who eats it, that's who it affects, not someone else. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. 31 reads, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. Look at 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their <laughs> inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. What is God saying? God is saying to the Israelites that they don't have any excuses. None. Okay, just because somebody didn't tell me, that's not an excuse. Because he said he put it on the inward part. Now, what has God has done for us? What God has done for the church? 
Now that was Israel. Now let's look at the church. What God has done for the church, he said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And here's, here's the thing. Once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, then we have the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost that comes on the inward parts. And when he comes on the inward parts, then, amen, we are held accountable, amen, for all the things that God has told us and shared with us. We're always going to be held accountable, but now we're saved. What we're saying now is that, God, well, I'm going to follow you. I love you. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. Whatever you say, I'm going to do. Whatever you, whatever you tell me, God, I'm going to do it. I'm going to listen to you. Yes, yes. That's what we're saying. Amen. Because we belong to him. Yeah. I'm going to go over here to the book. Amen. Of Romans, of, of uh, Romans chapter number three, and this is the New Testament I was telling us about that we're going to share with us. Romans chapter number number three. Because all of us who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we have the Holy Ghost in us. Amen. We don't have to wait on the Holy Ghost. We don't have to tarry. We ain't got to do all those things. All we have to do is accept him. Why? Because he's a gift. Amen. And if he is a gift, all we have to do is accept him. And once we accept him, receive him, amen, we are empowered, amen, by the power of God. Amen. And now that we're empowered, that means we're supposed to walk right. Amen. We're supposed to talk right. Amen. Why? Because we are empowered by the Holy Ghost. Amen. He is on the inward parts, amen, of us. And in Romans chapter number 3, verses number 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The question often calls that, wait a minute now, hold up. We would use this, but we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Meaning, meaning what? Meaning that, that it's okay to continue to sin? No, no, no. Let's take a look at that once again there. It says, for all have what? Sin. That means what? That's what we did. Is that right? I want us to get it right. That's what we what? Did. For all have sinned is what? Past tense. For all have sinned and come short or fall short of the glory of God. What exactly is that telling us? It's telling us that, look, before we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, Thank you, listen now. The law was one thing, but grace is another. Yes. Before we accepted, amen, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we did anything and everything, amen, that we wanted to do, that we felt as though we were big and bad enough to do, because it was all about us. But now that we have accepted Jesus Christ as our, our Lord and Savior, we now know that all the sins that we did allowed us or made us fall short of God's glory. And now that we're saved, whenever we uh, uh, would we'll say that we come short or fall short of God's glory, it's because of the fact that what? We have sinned. I'm talking about right now, that we're sinning. That's when we're falling short. Why should we fall short of God's glory? Why? Take a listen to this right here. Regarding sin, there's, there are some things in which we have in our Bible. I like using what my Bible has because it, it, it's very, very helpful. The human need and the divine provision are alike applied universally. Come short of the glory of God. Man can exceed his own standards, but never left to himself can he attain the, uh, to God's standard of righteousness. So what God requires is righteousness. Once we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we became in right standing with God. We became righteous before God's eyesight. Why? Because of the fact that God, amen, because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Regarding personal sin, a personal sin may be one of commission, doing something that is prohibited, or sin of omission, failing to do what is required of us. It may also express itself in it either an act or attitude. Y'all catch that? An act or what? An attitude. Yeah, yeah. We all know how some folk have attitudes. We all know how some sane folk can have some attitudes. Yeah. Oh, 
That, 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 that means that you're sinning, and, and when you're sinning, you come short, or you fall short of the glory of God. Amen. There is no reason for a saint, folk, to have God's glory coming short, or coming short of it. We should always lift up the name of Jesus. We should always lift him up, because when he lifted up, he said he was for all me and unto him. And when we're, we're lifting him up, and then he's drawing people unto him. Amen. That's the important thing about it. So when we're not lifting him up, we're being away from, we're staying away from God's glory, we're falling short, we're doing wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, sin is portrayed in scripture as falling short of God's glory. Going astray like a wandering ship, mm -hmm. transgressing or overstepping the law, trespassing, which means exercising our own wills in the realm of divine authority. Yeah. Sin brings hideous results affecting not only our relationship with God, but also our relationship with others. Yes. That's what sin does. Mm -hmm. Sin takes us, amen, we've heard some things before I've heard uh, different readings on it. Sin takes us where we don't want to go, yes. keeps us longer than we want to stay. Yes. Sin does all of those things because we have given unto sin. Yes. And whenever we give unto sin, or when we, when we give ourselves to sin, amen, we come short of the glory of God. Yes. Not only do we fall short, but guess what? We are showing the world, amen, just how bad off, amen, God's saints are. Yes. You know how they look at you. Yes. Not only are they looking at you because you're representative of God, but they're looking at all the rest of the saints. Yes. Because they're saying all the rest of them are just like you if we are falling short yes. of God's glory. If we're continuing to lift him up, yeah. then, they all, then the world was saying, hey, now there's something about this, about this walk. There's something about this way. Oh, yeah. Come and talk to me. Tell me about this. And that's why our walk is so important, amen, to, uh, out there in the world. Goes on. Take a listen. Um, if not checked, sin will destroy the natural process of every person. Christians should not sin. Take a listen, y'all. But if they do, they should remember their advocate, yes. Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and confess their sins. Mm -hmm. First John 1 John 1.9, and confess their sins in order to restore fellowship with God. Amen. So as a saint, as someone who accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it, it, here's what that means. It means that we don't have to sin. What do you mean you don't have to sin? I mean, good. Look, every time we sin, it's a choice. We can either do it or we don't have to. Yeah. There it is, lying at the door. Mm -hmm. It's our choice. Mm -hmm. It's there. And we find ourselves in sin. The Bible says we have an advocate, Jesus Christ. Yes. We confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. We are right standing with him. Uh -huh. God's righteousness. Amen. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to become that propitiation or that sacrifice for us. Now we're accepted in him. And because of that, what he has done, he has imputed, just like he did with Abraham, righteousness to us. We have become righteousness because of Jesus Christ, because of Jesus Christ, but because of the sacrifice. Yes. The Bible lets us know in Hebrews uh, chapter number 9, verse number 22, it says, look, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. We must, amen, accept amen. Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior if we want to be in right standing with God. Amen. Take a listen to this. The soul that sinned, it shall die. Amen. Sin is being a continual or a lifestyle or a way yeah. of doing it. If we are living in sin, what he says is that, get out of it. Yeah. He says, then fix it. Yeah. Uh -huh. then, look, confess your sins. Yeah. He is faithful and just yeah. to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Yeah, amen. Right. It does, amen, you're better than any type of bath, any type of shower, amen. any of that kind of stuff. Amen. The forgiveness that God has yeah. for us. Yes, because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I really like how, amen, this for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. But now we're allowing ourselves, amen, to look right before the world by living our lives in such a way that God is pleased. 
We study in Sunday school. God, Jesus, he's coming back for the bride. He's coming back for the church. We should act in such a way but he'll be very pleased to come back for that church. Saints, it's because of the sacrifice Jesus made for us that we can, amen, walk this life, walk in this life the way in which he would have us to. Amen. What do you mean that I'll never sin? No, and I said you'll never sin. What he said is that don't live in your sin. Amen. Don't continue in that sin. Mm -hmm. The soul that sinneth continual, mm -hmm. it shall die. Yes. Mm -hmm. This Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But God has put the law. God has put his word <laughs> in our hearts. Uh -huh. We might not sin against him. Amen. That's what God has done. I like what happened over in Hebrews uh, chapter number 6. I'm going to quickly read that right fast. And uh, something I wanted to share with us regarding that. Because, you know, how once you've heard of the saying, once saved, always saved. You know, just like you heard sour grapes, teeth, oh, yeah. uh, teeth, top sour grapes, teeth set on the edge, and, and everything else. We've heard of him once saved, always saved, and everything. Let's take a look at this right here. Chapter number 6 of Hebrews. Look at verse number 4. Just read from 4 to 6. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they, look at this, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. Sin they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. I just want to share that word, if. That's a big word. It says one of the biggest words in the English language. So in all actuality, once we have tasted, once we have, like, man, come on to this side, there is no way we're going to go back on the other side. There is nothing compared to what God has blessed us with on this side. Oh, yeah. So meaning what? Meaning that we're not going to go back if, he says, you can. And I want to share this. It says, this passage does not teach that one can lose his salvation through disbelief, disbelief <coughs> or apostasy. These verses refer to a hypothetical situation whereby the author stresses what would happen to the saved person if he could fall away. The author does not believe one can lose his salvation or that his readers had, but he so speaks to demonstrate the folly some might have in imagining that they can turn back to Judaism without suffering loss. Though the author is not writing about his readers, the, he, is still, uh, he still is writing for their sakes, if they shall fall away is the translation given to the fifth particle, participle of the, of the passage. So once again, once we accept Jesus Christ, excuse me, once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, what he's saying is that we are now, amen, in right standing with God. If we're in right standing with God, we've tasted, amen, what God has given us. There's no way we're going to go back. Oh, yeah. Anybody here want to go back, amen, to where you came from? That's like that pig, amen, going back to his own what? Slop, thank you, that's a good word. <laughs> or a dog returning to his own vomit. Uh -huh. What it is that once we're saved and accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, in order for us from keeping, uh, from, from continuing doing the same things we used to do, we allow the Holy Ghost, or we give ourselves to the Holy Ghost so he can have full control of our lives, and when he has full control of our lives, then we will walk the way in which God would have us to walk. Amen. And this, this what we have is liberty in him because of the Spirit of God. That's what happened. So once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, there is nothing that can possibly tear us apart. There is nothing that can possibly separate us from the love of God. Nothing at all. Whether it's death, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It cannot separate us from the love of God. Amen. So, with all that said, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're saved. You have the Holy Ghost. And because you have the Holy Ghost, 
the Holy Ghost keeps you. Amen. The Bible in Ephesians says that you're sealed with that promise, the Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed. That means if you're sealed, you belong to him. Amen. And if you belong to him, you cannot be with the world. Amen. That means that once you are sealed, you have to come from among them. And here's what I'm preaching now. I'm preaching sanctification. Yeah. Now, all of y'all who've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, y'all sanctified, y'all. Mm -hmm. Don't get scared. You're sanctified. And the church that you're in right now, guess what, y'all? It's a sanctified church. Why is this church sanctified? We got you sanctified. Everybody okay? So, now that we all Holy Ghost filled, sanctified saints, all right. we got to act like it. Amen. Right. Amen. We gotta act like it. Amen. I'm not talking about act like somebody else. I'm talking about act like what the Bible said. Amen. Be who the Bible called us to be. Yeah. The Bible has called Amen. us to be holy. Holy. Uh -huh. That's what He has Amen. done. Amen. We conduct our, ourselves as such. Amen. We build up and not tear down. Amen. Jesus Christ, amen, he is the one who we, who we worship. He is the one who we who we say, who we who we will bring forth in anything and everything that we do. He is the one. Amen. He is the one that's magnified. Yes. That's our conversation. Yes. That's our that's our plea to others yes. to, to accept Jesus Christ as, as Lord and Savior. Yes. No. Uh -huh. To be sanctified. Yes. No. Sure. To be set apart yes. Yes. from the Word. Yes. Yes. And that's what God has called us to be. That's what God has called us to do. Yes. Not to be like the world. That means that we shouldn't be cussing nobody out. Yes. Right. We shouldn't be cussing, period. Amen. That's blaspheming. Amen. That's making the gods. Uh, okay, if I'm a representative and I and I and I'm conducting myself, Amen, like the world, that's blaspheming God. Yeah. Amen. So we gotta watch out for those things. Amen. What to say? Tell you something that you don't already know. That means we gotta start conducting ourselves in such a way that way we don't even have to talk about it. Is that right? Amen. I'm talking about to say it because why? Paul said the same thing. Over in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, he said, I couldn't talk to you as a spiritual, but a carnal. Because right. he said he had carnal Christians mm -hmm. that he was talking to. Mm -hmm. They couldn't receive the spiritual aspect of, of, of what he was saying. So what we got to do, we got to talk what the word of God is saying, and we've got to, amen, be the people who God has called us to be. Yeah. Not be worldly, but be, amen, Christ-like in all that we do, amen. all that we say, amen. and all that we think. Means that we gotta continue to allow God's word to, to to totally reside in us and and the Holy Ghost be magnified inside of us. Yeah. We continue to feed Him with God's word by coming to Bible study and, and Sunday school, mm -hmm. and we study God's word. Mm -hmm. We we'll get in the Old Testament, take a look at it, and then we'll come across that passage saying that that the soul that sinned it shall die. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if that's the case, what do you mean the soul that sinned it shall die? I'm going to end with this right here. In the book of Luke. I'm going to tell y'all something. Hell is real. Yes, it is. And when we die, we're either going to go to heaven or hell. Amen. In the book of Luke, chapter number 16. Now, I'm just going to read this while we're hearing because I want us to know that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. This is Jesus speaking here in Luke chapter number 16, verse number 19. It says, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple. Y'all probably heard this before. And found in it. The Bible says that he lived in luxury every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. 23 says, and in hell, does that say hell? Yeah. Yeah. Hades, hell. Yeah. He lifted up his eyes. Yeah. Who lifted up his eyes? The rich man. In hell, remember he died. Yeah. Uh -huh. But when he died, the Bible said he lifted up his eyes in hell. Mm -hmm. A location, a place. Jesus says this. 
And he says this right here. Being in torment, meaning that brother was hurt. Being in torment and seeing Abraham afar off, the Bible says, means that he can, he can feel, he can see, of course. Yes. He doesn't need glasses. We see that, right? See, that, see Abraham afar off, and he can identify who people were yeah. from ages past. And Lazarus in his bosom. He may not pay no attention to Lazarus while he's sitting outside his gate, but he shall see him now. Yeah. Uh -huh. 24 says, and he cried. Yeah. He had feelings. And said, Father Abraham, yeah. have mercy on me. On, on me. He still wants some mercy now. He didn't get none of that. And now all of a sudden he wants some. Yeah. He, knew, he knew who Abraham was. Yeah. He heard about him. He studied about him, but didn't want to follow him. Yeah. Or understand what, what, uh, uh, what Abraham, the teachings and the lessons that was there. And sin, he says, Lazarus. Yeah. Now he wants Lazarus, amen, to be that servant. He says that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this, take a listen to this, y'all, flame. In hell, there's fire. So you've heard the term hell fire. It's real. Jesus is saying it. 25, but Abraham said, son, Remember that thou in thy lifetime thou receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, okay, since you can't do nothing for me, here's what I want you to do, Abraham. Therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Look, y'all. First of all, that was already at his house. He didn't want to do nothing for him. Now, he wants Father Abraham to send Lazarus to his father's house, which probably got a gate to it also. And imagine what they're going to do with him. He says, for I have five brothers. Now he's thinking about his family. Mm -hmm. That he may testify unto them. They must have been heathen like him. <laughs> Look, lest they also come into this place of torment. Mm -hmm. He's concerned about his family. He doesn't want his family to come, mm -hmm. amen, to hell. And hell is real. Yes, it is. Abraham said unto him, and that's why we always talk about get saved. That's all we are talking about. Somebody when you say, get saved. Mm -hmm. Accept yeah. Jesus Christ. It's not hard to do. All you can do is just have a made up mind. Yes. Amen. 29 says, Abraham said unto him, they have Moses yes. and the prophets, talking about all the writings that are there. Let them hear them. They have the word. We have the word. Mm -hmm. Verse 30, and he said, nay, Father Abraham, they don't want to read nothing. But if one went unto them from the dead, mm -hmm. they will repent. Mm -hmm. They will repent. He knew his brothers just that well. Yes. They will repent. If you don't believe the word of God, you're not going to believe if somebody came back from the dead. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, bless you who believe that they don't see those of us who ain't going to be able to see the, the, the nail marks in his, in his hands or, or his feet or touch that man that is in his side, the spirit, the spirit uh, 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 holding his side. But it's by faith. Verse 31 says, and he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Saints, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Hell is there. The Bible said it was only made for the devil and his angels. But the Bible says because they have the people, hell has enlarged itself. Hell is real. Why would anyone want to go to hell when they don't have to? All it takes is a decision. Yes. 
is to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. God has blessed us with one more day. One more day. One more day. One more day. He's blessed us with it. And we got to seize that day. We got to take control of that. We got to receive that day. Amen. And bless God in that day. Amen. Bible also lets us know come to Him today. While it's called today. Amen. Because when tomorrow comes, today is no more. Amen. Today is the day. Amen. Saints, once again, very short, the soul that sinned, yes. it shall die. And that's for real. Amen. Amen. Let us receive that. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.